this week on Down to Earth, delving into the third dimension, the limitless layers of a universe printed in 3D. And with 3D printing, complexity is free, so you can literally print anything you desire. 3D printing is speeding up the way we do medicine, making the impossible possible. Unimaginable without the 3D technology? No way, not in the same day. Just how far can the technology go? Next up, 3D printed body parts. Because the ink is biological. It has some activity, some biological activity. It can make a bone. This week, we're down to earth in the United States, taking you with us to the future. These machines around me are something out of a science fiction film. They allow us to print practically any object in three dimensions. The beginning, some say, of a brand new industrial revolution. 3D systems in South Carolina. A temple of the printing technology founded here way back in the 80s. Three decades later, the general public is only beginning to understand how it works. Well, let me introduce you to 3D printing. This is our entry-level Cubex, and what it's doing is it's ingested a digital file that's right here on this USB stick, and it is going to cut it into cross-sections and print it layer by layer by layer using a plastic material. Anything you can imagine can be converted into a file, sent to the printer, and it will render it in full three dimensions. And what you end up with is a shoe similar to this. That's what this is printing right now. And with 3D printing, complexity is free. From something like this prototype of a drill that was created using a real drill. The long list continues. All different shoes, all different designs. So literally with 3D printing, anything you can imagine can be printed at the drop of a single digital file. Mainly plastic, but also metal, rubber and wax. More than 120 materials can be used as the ink inside these printers. Very quickly, the possibilities unfold. Already, Boeing uses dozens of 3D printed parts in its aeroplanes. There was shock when the world's first printed gun fired a shot successfully in May last year. And now NASA is working on a 3D printed pizza to feed its astronauts in space. But the biggest impact of all could be the implications for our health. Hannah was born with a rare neuromuscular disease, which cripples the strength in her muscles and joints. Today, she uses this exoskeleton, customised to her tiny body and then printed. These are known as magic arms. I think the biggest thing is that as soon as we put this on, she can lift her arms up, you know, where normally she's stuck down at her sides. Um, and that in itself is just amazing because to see her struggle to try to lift her arms up and then you put this piece of equipment on and she's able to lift her arms with no problem at all. It's an amazing, amazing piece of equipment. I can't, I can't say that enough. Reach her mommy. That's about as far as she can go. Life for Hannah without the magic arms is hard. <laughs> <laughs> the device was designed and 3D printed one hour away at the DuPont Hospital for Children in Delaware. Inside, we find Whitney Sample tinkering in his hospital workshop. The key is making equipment light enough for children to wear but strong enough to withstand life's knocks and bumps. The beauty, however, is the ease in which a new piece can be created in just a few clicks. So imagine we need to modify a part because either something's broken or the child is growing. Uh, how quickly can we get a new piece ready for them to use? If they call me up in the morning, I can have a part ready by the afternoon. Send it to the printer uh, and you can see here it takes about four hours to print. And by the time they come back for therapy in the afternoon, I can have it printed and assembled, ready to go. Unimaginable without the 3D technology? No way, not in the same day. It would take me a week or two. 
time to put Whitney's claims to the test. After four hours, this is what comes out of the printer. It's very light. Very light. What is it exactly? This is uh, one of the elbow joints. This uh, particular part is ABS. It's a formulation of ABS, which is uh, Lego plastic. Very light, very durable, and very strong. This morning, Hannah and her family have come to the hospital for a routine test of the equipment. <coughs> Whitney is one of her favourites. He encourages her to play. Push, push, push. And now, of course, she's putting them in the wrong holes. You just like doing things different, don't you? We're, we're doing work without making her feel like she's doing work. It has a lot of different key points in it. It has a tool that she has to hold on to, which is, uh, can be an issue with uh, some of the kids. Um, it has her grasping things down low, bringing them up high and left and right. So she, it has all those kind of movement characteristics that we kind of look for to see, uh, you know, is it everything fitting properly? Is it interfering with her elbows? Uh, is she getting to the places that she needs to get to? The ultimate goal is that someday this piece of equipment will make her strong enough in the arms that she won't have to rely on, on it to be able to lift her arms up and brush her hair, brush her teeth, wash her face off. Um, that, you know, it'll give her enough muscle strength that she can do it on her own. For the moment, most 3D printed health devices are used awesome. externally. Implanting them in the body comes with more risks. <laughs> But one exception attracted headlines last year when doctors made an emergency application to save a baby's life. Kaiba was born with a weak airway to his lungs. He'd often stop breathing. Using a CT scan of his bronchus, the team printed a splint made of dissolvable plastic to be used as a temporary support. It was a world first. Kaiba was brought to the operating room. The splint was placed over the top of the bronchus. This has a process of opening the bronchus up anteriorly and posteriorly to completely widen the bronchus. It was amazing. As soon as the splint was put in, the lungs started going up and down for the first time. We knew that he would be okay. The last stop in our 3D printing tour is in North Carolina. And it's here where the possibilities really begin to blow the mind. 3D printing has already exceeded expectations, but what if the most exciting was still to come? What if we replaced the typical plastic input with living human cells? That's exactly what they're doing here at the Wake Forest Institute. In fact, their ultimate goal is to print spare body parts on demand. Let me show you how we print the finger. This is 3D printing at its most extreme. Under a project backed by the US Army, the ink here is a mixture of biodegradable plastic and living cells, together known as bioink. Layer by layer, they are squirted out alternately to produce a finger bone. So what we have here is the first digit of a finger. This is a mixture of a gel and cells, and together with the gel, the cells will make bone over a period of about three weeks so that we can use uh, to replace finger for soldiers who were wounded, wounded and lost uh, their fingers or part of their hands. Over time, the biological cells replicate and eventually replace the plastic scaffolding, leaving only solid bone. We're also making, uh, these are several digits of a bone, but we can also make an ear or a nose, and this is a small kidney. So we can make all type of uh, organs using the 3D uh, printer. None of these has been tested in humans, but studies with animals are underway. At the same time, the US military has sponsored another project worth $24 million, known as Body on a Chip. The idea, to print out simplified body parts on a five centimetre chip and connect them via an artificial blood substitute. It starts one organ at a time, albeit a mini one. On this chip, there's a micro-organ. 
Yes, what you have here is a very, very small organ. In this case, this is a liver. If you would take a microscope and you look under the microscope, what you'll see is just the same liver as you would see uh, for a normal person. But this is tiny, like I can barely see this. You're telling me that this functions like a normal liver. This would have the same function like a normal liver, this small, what we call organoid, uh, can make albumin, can make all the enzymes that a liver, a normal liver would make. And, and organoid, also, an organoid is, you said? Correct. We want to test them for different drugs or different uh, viruses to see how they, would they affect the organ. And we can make many of them so we can taste many drugs and many different viruses. The ultimate goal, to print life-sized organs to replace those missing or damaged in human beings, is probably decades away. It's certainly a futuristic idea, but one that is no longer confined to the realms of science fiction.